if something like this happened to the average person, mm -hmm. it's natural. You're going through five months of rehab. You were projected to go to the NFL. That was kind of a given. You are at the height of your life. You're young, you're energetic. You have so much going on. Mm -hmm. And then it stops. Hey, can you talk to me about just coming to terms? Mm -hmm. what, what is the mindset of somebody who's coming to terms with, I have no movement. And I know now you can move your shoulders. Mm -hmm. But at the time, you have no movement from your neck down. But you are athlete. Like, what is it like coming to terms with something like that? And is there a why me? Are there suicidal moments? Are you feeling like if I can't do it the way that I'm used to doing it, I don't want to do it at all. Let me just end things. How, how does this work for you mentally? And this is where I chalk it up to being an athlete, honestly. You know, having that mindset of working out on a daily basis, grinding, sacrificing, learning in the classroom, learning in the, in the, in, um, the meeting rooms, learning on the field. I said to my, I got opened up to a whole new world. I, my, I was in my little bubble when I was at Rutgers. All I knew was practice, weight room sessions, class, study hall, a tiny bit of a social life, and repeat. Just repeat all the time. When this injury happened to me, I was like, there's a real life outside of New Brunswick, <laughs> New Jersey. There's stuff that's going on. And then you start to see people in a similar situation as you, but they don't have the same mindset. And you see them upset. And then me, in my head, immediately, it's like, nah, this is go time. This is my life. I, whatever I can control, best believe, I'm going to do that. I'm going to control that. Everything else, I'll leave in God's hands. But this ain't my time. When I finally got to rehab after three weeks, I'm like, it's time to go. It's crazy, though, because I went from benching 415 pounds and squatting 605 pounds to they put a, a balloon on my chest. And I had to do breathing exercises to try to blow a balloon off my chest, hold it. And then exhale, inhale, hold it, exhale. I'm like, I went from benching all this way to, I got to try to push a balloon off my chest. But I said, hey, this is it. A.E., getting that mindset. And I remember no, at, at first, everyone knew me as the Rutgers football player. So no one would talk to me when I first got to the gym. Everyone would just stare at me, go to the gym. So in my head, I'm like, you know what? You know, put that all eyes on me. Tupac, my, everyone, <laughs> everyone's looking at me. It's time for me to go to work. Ain't nobody going to say nothing to me. That's fine. Hoodie up. Let's go to work. And that's how I kind of attacked it. I took that as my, like, my weight room sessions, my therapy sessions, my practices. And as things started to come back, those were my game day victories. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And let's talk about that for a second. You said things started to come back. I know you were not given a great prognosis in terms of even breathing, like forget walking, forget moving, any of that stuff, being able to breathe on your own. Can you, again, just speak to that? Because that's not a small victory. That's a huge victory. How much of that is your sheer will? To, to I know what y'all are saying, but I know me. And I'm not going to just accept that I can't breathe on my own. What is the mindset like with that? Uh, it's funny because this, this one, obviously I chalk it up always to God, but this is my stubbornness as well. Mm -hmm. I'm over that bed at Kessler and I remember the machine, it made it sound like, shh, shh, like, I'm like, I can't sleep. Like, this machine, <laughs> this machine I, like, I can't even sleep. And I remember saying to myself, I asked my respiratory therapist, I'm like, can you take me off this ventilator for a few minutes and maybe I can, you know, fall asleep? He said, if I take you off, you're going to last about one minute and I'm going to put you back. So give me that one minute to fall asleep. <laughs> she took me off. And I'm not going to lie to you. I felt like I just ran, ran the New York City Marathon. I was like, like huffing, like huffing for air, but it's like slow, it started to slowly come down. And it was like, and she was like, oh, you're breathing. You're breathing on your own. An hour and a half later, I was still breathing on my own. And she put me back on the ventilator for the rest of the night. But she said, you know what? Maybe you're ready to start weaning off of this thing. And the next day, two hours. Next day, five hours. Ten hours. Next thing you know, two weeks later, 
I'm breathing fully on my own again. Wow. Tell me God ain't good, Eric. Tell me God ain't good. It was, it was incredible. Five, week, five weeks after my injury, after they told me I'll never breathe on my own again, I was breathing on my own. How much movement do you have now? You see, I can I'll move around, show me shit. That's some back motion. Hey, show me shit here, show me shit here. <laughs> so things have came back from me slowly but surely. Every now and then I can get my finger to, t- to twitch a little bit, maybe even like a little toe, just little twitches here and there. And, you know, nothing crazy significant, but, you know, like I said, I control what I can control. I think I leave in God's hands, and that's why I work my butt off to raise awareness. So one day we will find a cure for paralysis. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.